basketball fans, welcome into Raptors tonight. The Raptors fell to the Boston Celtics in their first game in the in-season tournament, 108 to 105. I'm Akil Agassin, subbing in for your host, Randy Urban. That's Jack Armstrong, the coach. We got Leo Routens and my guy, Javon Shepard. Now let's jump right into it. It came down to an opportunity for Scotty Barnes. Could have tied this game on a well-designed play from Coach Darko. Jack, we'll start with you. Your, what you saw from the Raptors operating in crunch time. Well, they got a great shot, to your point. You're right. I mean, they threw that little skip pass over the top to the opposite corner. He was wide open. He had yep. time to set his feet. Unfortunately, the shot didn't go in. I thought they played their tails off in the second half. They played great. And obviously, you put a Siakam on the floor. He makes a big difference for everybody. Um, yeah, I thought Schroeder played really well tonight. I thought their energy, their, their second quarter defense was not good. No, that their was... second half defense was excellent. All right, let's talk about it. The tail of the tape, as Jack just mentioned, that second quarter really put them in a hole. But the second half, they found something. Leo, what did you see? Was it an inspired message, or did they find something next to the nose wise? Well, you know, the game in Boston, I was disappointed because there was no fight. Like, yeah. they weren't attacking. They were, weren't going at people. And they were allowing Boston to kind of do whatever they want to do. And that second quarter, they kind of fell back into that a little bit. But second half, they went and played the way they're supposed to play, right? And so, you know, in Boston, Pascal never attacked Drew Holiday. In this game, he was right at him, right? You know, you had uh, Dennis Schroeder being aggressive, going after him. When this team plays that way, you know, and, and think about it. If Pascal's not out with foul trouble and say OG's in a lineup, you got Gary Trent back, this team can play with anybody when they play that way. They just got to avoid those games where they just come out just laid back. Well, it's not, they're not built for that at all. To your point, Leo, you got to have Pascal on the floor. Right? When you pick yeah. up those three fouls early, he sits out the whole second quarter. It's a, it's a big hit to your team, but he came out the second half and he really put the team on his back. You can see they just played more with a flow. And we've heard Coach Darko talk about playing with pace. Right in the second half, they didn't look like they were thinking as much. The wheels weren't turning. They were just popping up the floor, getting into the offense, getting the matchups they wanted. And I think that was the difference maker in that second half, right? Now, to your point, the shot that Scotty missed, great shot, right? Everybody was expecting Gary Trent to come out to the top of the key. Scotty Flair is unfortunate. But some of those, you know, the, the offensive rebounds in the first half, like you corral some of those bats, some of those balls right there, get yourself some opportunities to run out. It's a completely different game, even when you're missing OG and a couple of those other yeah. guys. All right, so what do we make of the Raptors' defense on the three ball? Because the Celtics took darn near 53s. <laughs> and um, it's an area where they're, what, number one in attempts in the league and number two in mix. Jack? Uh, that's what they do. So, but the problem is they, they play five out. Yeah. And they got five shooters on the floor. I think the most important thing is you got to guard the dribble really well. Because if you got to start sending help on their paint touches, now they just start flying the ball around and you're in big trouble. So uh, I thought the Raptors in the second half found a way to be two places at once, thought the energy was better. Or for next. And, and to, to uh, Shep's point, I, I thought they did a great job in the second half of their defensive rebounding. They got to those balls in the first half. You know, it's interesting. You look at the NBA right now, more people are going to the offensive glass this year than ever. Uh, a lot of times you'd see people going back and not allowing transition. So you got you to rebound the ball. And they did a better job with that in the second half. Chef, I'll go to you on that, because of course, that's the recipe here. You don't stop the three against the Boston Celtics. And then you get those mismatches when you switch with Porzingis getting a guy like Schroeder in the high post, mid post, low post. That's a huge advantage for them on offense. Yeah, well, you, you credit them. They're, that's their game, right? You look at their, their starting five. It is a talented group. They shoot the basketball. The Raptors went to the, to the one through five switches, and that was Boston's game plan to find Przingis at the top of the key, and, or at the free throw line, rather. And a number of times he had Shooter on him, turned around and just knocked down that shot. But you credit them, Coach Missoula, you know, tremendous in how he approached and adapted in this game. But you have, you know, three guys on the squad that have been all-stars last year, yeah. right? So this is not a, a squad that you take lightly. I thought the Raptors came out, they matched up, especially after the, the, the game that they played over there and got popped. This was a good response. Yeah, and they, and, and they got contributions all over the place. First half was Sam Hauser. Second half, you see Al Horford pitching in. And that's kind of the recipe for a, a championship caliber team. But one thing we saw was a really good defensive game plan on Jason Tatum. They slowed him down to start the game. What was so effective? Was it just 
the impact of a player like Scotty Barnes in a matchup like that? Well, I, you know, it's not one guy that ever stops a player like Tatum, right? It's got to be a team effort. But the great thing about Boston is no, uh, Tatum didn't have to force his game. Yeah. Brown goes, Drew Holiday goes, right? It, when he's not clicking, and then it's not a problem. Then nobody panics, nobody stresses. And I think in past years, you saw they had trouble, especially Brown and Tatum had trouble playing together. I got to get mine, you got to get yours. It's not, they're not playing like that. And anymore. that was their identity, right? Yeah, Taking yeah. Turns. Now and, it's, and flow. Now it's, it's a flow, right? And then you have Drew Holiday in a mix. I, one of the things I thought they did was, Porzingis and Holiday are a complement to their stars. Yeah. A lot of times you bring in players, yeah, they're good players, but the, there's going to be issues. How are you going to make this fit? They brought in guys that fit with their stars. They're going to make Brown and Tatum more comfortable, easier. They're going to get them easier shots. So it's a whole different look with those two. And then defensively, you, you, you raise your level as well because you've got a rim protector and a guy that can guard anybody on the floor in holiday. So uh, I, I just think that the chemistry and, and uh, the non-forcing things, everybody's like, Brown looks more comfortable to me than I've ever seen him just playing a game. He's cruising. He's cruising. Yeah. And Scotty made it difficult for Tatum. What I, what I appreciated was Scotty was able to stop penetrations, and because he was so long, the effort and energy that he was using and spending to get back out to the three-point line and contest, Tatum didn't just have his weight, right? And I thought, Scotty, you have to tip, his, tip your hat to him for the defense he played tonight. All right, so a lot of people made a big deal losing Marcus Smart. You kind of touched on it, and Jack, I'll throw this to you. Drew Holiday came in late, really hasn't had his chance to really put his stamp on this team. But if you ever had a question or a concern about this Celtics team with the firepower they had was not a lot of experience in terms of age. Like, sure, Tatum and Brown have been to the conference finals, been to the hilltop in the Eastern Conference, but Drew Holiday adds something else, right? A certain well, the guy's been an all-star. He's an all-defensive player. Got a title. And he has a title. And to me, I think he has a calmer temperament yeah. to run a team. Who made the big play tonight? Down the stretch, yep. big play. Well, in the post. Right? Yep. And he threw the pass late in the game as well That's to White for the corner three. Yep. That's your two guards. Yeah. So I love Marcus Smart. I'd want him on my team 100 times out of 100. I just think that there's such a thing as, like, when you evaluate a guy and say, that guy's maybe a four plus, that guy's a five minus. I think Holiday's a notch better. And I think for, for what they're playing for right now, even though you're giving something up in, in, in bench productivity, uh, you, you gotta you try to get elite guys that make a difference when the game's on the line in big championship competition. And the one thing I'll say is I still think the Celtics probably somehow, some way, are gonna find another way to get another guy. <laughs> they have to. I think their bench, they need to add one more piece to the puzzle. And I'm also have... concerned whether Persingas makes it through a whole season. Correct. That's, that's, and they're going to have to rest them. He played 65 games last year, which for him is a good amount. Uh, but to me, and here's the other thing with them. I don't know if you can win a title shooting the amount of threes Three that they days. take yeah. Yeah. and win on the road. I mean, like, if you want to get to the finals and win, uh, you got to have home court. they got to be the number one seed. They might have to have the best record. And because that style of play, I just think that you're going to have cold shooting nights, particularly on the road. And what do you, what's your alternative? They don't have a ton of post players. And I'm not saying they need a traditional back to the basket player. I just think they probably just need another guy off the bench. I don't know who that would be or what that would be. They haven't gotten the traditional Peyton Pritchard that they got. Like he's having like a No, he's not game. there. Howes is playing great. Yes. Al Horford's, Al Horford's a terrific second unit guy. They just need something else. He's a little long and tooth. At this I can't point. put my finger on it, but they just need another dude. Okay. Maybe not a great dude, but a good dude. Okay, and hopefully they address that. This like you. Maybe uh, you and your prime. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's 10 years ago. I, I'm well past my prime. But speaking <laughs> of someone who is in his prime, we have our fan of the night, and that is Max Griffiths, who's in town from New Brunswick with his dad. So I'm going to go off and find Max. Where's my guy Max? You're leaving us? Up. That's it? No, 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 no. I'll be right back. I'll Max. be right back. Get on over here, Max. All right, Max. All right. Over, Max. Our fan of the night, he's got the chain. So I like to go, Max. What's think, up, Max? I think Max has got a question for us regarding the in-season tournament. Max, give it to the guys. What do you guys think about the new court and jerseys? All right, Max wants to know about the court and the jerseys. Stop. I, the I love the court. And I, I, you know, I tell you what, as the, as the night went on, 
the jerseys grew on me too. I thought the color was really cool. Uh, I liked it. I thought I was at a Georgia Tech basketball game. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bobby Kremens. Bobby Kremens. I mean, I, I, no, I really, I liked it. You know what? This time of year, we were chatting about it before the game. You know, you're just trying to get people in the spirit of basketball again. So anything you could do different to get people's attention, I'm all That's for it. The only thing that could make the uniforms better be one of these. Right I here. like it. Oh, no, the gold ice. on. Oh, yeah. Ice. Oh, yeah. And it's you're dropping the gold, right? You, you know, you... <laughs> all right, so, uh, Max, it's time for us to take you over to our prize wheel because we want to get you out of here with something. All right, we got to get him a big prize. All right, so let's make some noise for Max one time. All right, Max. Max. Spin. You see what Max is shooting for, Max? What are you getting? Let's see, let's see, let's see. What's it going to be? Our prize tonight on the line. You know what? Oh, it's a hat. It's a hat every but you know what? I kind of like the hat you're wearing, Max. So I'm going to give you a choice. Are you looking for two tickets or a ball? Which one do you want? Which one do you want to shoot for here? Well, he lives in New Brunswick, so it might be tough. Well, he, he's going with a no-brainer. He's going for two tickets. Two tickets? All right. All right, so come on up to the line. You know where that. There you go, Max. You got to let it fly. This is for two tickets, folks. Oh! He got fouled. 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 It's a late whistle, so we're going to give him a second shot. Absolutely. Let's go. Boom! There we go. All right. Big up, my guy, Max. You got to give Jack a five. Come on over. So, Max. Max, remember the rule. Anytime you miss, say foul. Every time. <laughs> Say foul. Whether it's pick up or the And you're in the NBA. Anytime you miss, blame the ref or blame the coach. That's All right. right, so on behalf of the Raptors tonight crew, Max, we want to give you this. And stick around for the rest of the night and the rest of the show. We'll be back, OK? Thank All you, Max. Right. Stick around right, here, Max. Max. I got you. Woo! Good job, Max. Loving it, Max. All right, so from, from fortunately, that was our happy ending. We didn't get yeah. the ending we wanted tonight with the Toronto Raptors. But let's focus uh, quickly before we shift to other topics around the NBA. I want to talk about that second quarter drought and where there are areas for improvement for the Raptors. I know a lot of it had to do with Pascal not being on the floor. But on a night when you saw so much positives in terms of the fourth quarter, the second half. And the fourth quarters, by the way, have been really good. They finally got a good first quarter out of the last three games. Yeah. That second quarter... Minus Siakam, what was the issue, Javon? I'll start with you. Well, you, you can't allow your, your offense to impact the energy that you have on the defensive end, right? And it, it's tough, right? Because guys want to score the basket, but that's the reality of it. You put the ball in the hoop, you're more motivated, you're more energetic, you get back on the other end and you're sharing the basketball. Everybody wants to score. So you can't put, if you're not making shots, you can't put that much pressure on, your, on the defensive side. You got to find some ways to generate, you know, that, that interest and, and be engaged on that side of the floor. I think then you get a, a different game, right? Now you get guys getting rebounds, you get guys in passing lanes. They're doing a good job, or they did a better job of just staying disciplined in front of their, in front of their opponent. But that offense, if the ball's not dropping, Leo, like you can't, it can't affect your defense. Also, okay, you gotta understand who you're playing against and what your role is. So how many times in the second quarter, and it happened again at different times in the game, Grady Dick's playing against Persingas. Yeah. What's your job when you're Grady Dick? Shoot. Shoot. Persingas is not coming out in the three. You no, have to fly. take that shot. Just to keep him honest. Instead, you put the ball in the four. What's he do? Boom. Yeah. You're gone. Because you're not even going into him. You're just trying to get a shot over a guy that's huge. Right? Scotty, got the ball. You got a little mid-range, little like one dribble, stop, pull up. No. You're going a little further. Persingas going to block that. Now, unless you get into the body strong and try to draw the foul, you're not scoring. So they, you've got to understand, when you've got a guy in those situations, right, take what the defense gives you. Don't go, you know, it, 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 that's, it's, it's smart basketball. And not taking your shot or taking the right shot puts you in compromising situations, especially against a good team. I got something to say. The Utah Jazz are playing the Phoenix Suns right now, and I look it up at the TV, and Laurie Markkinen looks like a young Leo Routens. <laughs> he Is does. It the curls? Is it the curls? He's got well the here. curls. Remember you had the curls? You had the perm? Yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. he looks just like you did when you were in your 20s. You need to keep that footage on file at all times just in case a moment Back comes in the day. when you can utilize Leo with the sixes and Laurie Markkinen now with the Utah Jazz. I'm telling you, he looks just like you. Was that a perm or was that natural? No, it's a, it's a little bit of both. It was a style. Yeah. Yeah. A little okay. little okay. Back in the day, Leo. Right. Back now, in the day. Now, now, you mentioned Phoenix and Utah. That's another in-season uh, in tournament, the IST. Tonight was a game for the Raptors. They didn't get the win, but fortunately, because if you don't qualify, points matter. So they kept it close, all important in this tournament. But 
Is it working? Is it compelling people? We saw Dame Lillard with a great quote about the fact that he wants, uh, the quote, quote goes, you want to win that first of all, but for the it's other guys on your team, right? Because that money guys. can be yep. life changing, $500,000. So is this compelling? Is this going to shift things early in the season, Jack? You know, it could be one of those stories for a team that maybe doesn't end up winning the NBA championship, but ends up having a great season because of the pressure packed games, yeah. particularly as you go along in the tournament, that might kind of galvanize a team and bring it together and propel them into having a really good year. I don't know the answer to the question yet because we haven't gone through the whole thing yet. But I think no matter what happens, next year and the year after the year after that, they're going to find ways to tweak it and make it that much yeah, better. Yeah, I think it takes some time for you to really buy into, but I liken it to, and Leo, you can attest to this too, when, when we're playing in Europe, that the in-season cup, right? Yeah. Obviously we're playing more games, we're playing more, right, more games then. But it gives you something else to play for. And from a selfish yeah. standpoint. But a big difference though. Those are extra games. Extra games, it's and not. They, and they wear you down. This is part of your schedule, right? But I also think you're playing under the bright lights. These guys going into contract situations, you can leverage this how you played in the cup as well, right? For me, if I'm a player, I'm saying, look, I performed under the lights. I'm deserving of this amount of money. You know what I, I think, as Jack said, as this goes on, right, when everybody that didn't make it to the finals is watching the finals in Vegas, they go, I wouldn't mind being out there, right? <laughs> so it's, it's I, a good look. I, yeah, so I, I think that it's got to build a little bit, but I, I like what the league's doing, like with the courts, so the fans start going, hey, this is different. Yeah. yeah. I know it's Tuesday night or Friday night, but this is different. Right, it's so, a little buzz. Yeah, a little, a little buzz. buzz. Yeah, it's very important, um, a differentiator, and the court really helps yeah. you know that this is an in-season tournament game. All right, time to switch modes and talk around the league, and we got to talk about it, one of the most viral moments in the NBA so far this season. <laughs> Draymond Green going full MMA <laughs> and putting Rudy Gobert in a chokehold mid-game in a fight that I clearly thought Clay Thompson instigated against McDaniels. But, hey, that's my own personal opinion. The real question, though, we'll start with Javon, we'll end with Jack. Was five games enough warranted? Where do you I fall? Mean, he should have got more. You look more. at his, he no, more. Look at his no, no. Leo, this is a full Nelson. Come on now. This Come is, on. You, look at this. You've got to find some way to control yourself emotionally. The reality is Draymond means a lot to his team, right? And some of these episodes, I'm going to call them, it's, it's not warranted, right? You can pull him off. You can pull Gobert off. But now when you've removed him, it's, it's time to move on. You're valuable to your team. I might be with Javon on this one. Although $800,000 to take out of someone's pocket is a lot of money. But I'm waiting to hear from Leo you. wants to play. He was doing WWE. Leo's <laughs> wrestling. He's, he's old school. Away. He's I'm just going. Jack, get this guy, man. I get I know one, two games. Hey, first of all, Draymond, Draymond's not an idiot, OK? He knows he doesn't like Gobert. He also knows those two teams could meet at some point in time in the postseason. Yes. He, he's all about, I'm going to send a message, I'm going to get in your head, I'm going to do all this stuff. <laughs> okay, he's not going to hurt him. He had him in a headlock. He's not, it, was, it wasn't a chokehold. The guy wasn't going to... Accidents gonna, happen. Ah, the guy wasn't going to drop dead. So you know what? A couple games, slap on a wrist. But as, as much as the NBA wants to clean up the game, Draymond has a reputation of doing things that are completely out of hands. Well, my problem with Draymond, more so than anything else, and the league tolerates it, he is completely completely disrespectful to officials. Yes. Like, bordering, I don't know, I, if I were an official, I'd say, hey man, I'm gonna Let's call see, the game, we're talking, that's, but I will, you, I will meet you out in the hallway. And you know what, you know what, I'm serious. No, no, and, and so, it's, and they let him get away with, and they let him get away with it. We're talking about a different thing. I agree with that. The referees allow him to do stuff, and then they wonder what, what why, why stuff happens. I don't care about the, the choke cut, uh, whatever. But on a general rule, I agree with that, that you can't let a guy just do whatever he wants to do every day unless you let everybody else do that. There's a Draymond double standard, because you saw what it, he did with Anthony Edwards, and he didn't get kicked out. But it, go, it goes to the bad boys thing of Detroit. If you do the same thing for 48 minutes every game, you get away with it. Hey, you know right? what's funny? That's I think who he is. We're forgetting one other element. He's now become a distraction to his team. He's compromising his team. Every time he gets, this is early in the season. You get five games now. He's going to get a couple more technicals. There's going to be another episode later. Hey, you could argue he cost his team a championship against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Right, you, you need him, especially now with Chris Paul in the mix. Flagrants. This team is supposed to be a veteran, well-executing team. 
and it, it, they're just not there yet, right? And I think Draymond has a lot to do with that because he is to the defense what Steph is to their offense. And can I predict the future, though? Please. Because this is the biggest scam about the NBA. <laughs> in a few years when he retires, he will be a beloved member of the NBA community. Yep. And he will be all over television in the oh, United yeah. States. Oh, yeah. The new Charles Barkley. Yeah, he is. He's got the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, but Charles Barkley wasn't that type of guy when he played. There's a difference there. And that's, but the, through the, window. that's the world we live in. People have short memories. And look, the guy's a great player. He's a tremendous competitor. And I thought Steve Kerr said it right. He goes, hey, he deserved the five games. I agree with that. He des I don't think he deserves 10 or 20, but he deserves five. It's only money. Okay. Well, hopefully a warning has <laughs> been sent. It, huh, Jack? It's only money. Hey, let's yeah, see that oh, wallet again. It's only, it's only money. money. Let's see that wallet again. Okay, quickly. <laughs> it's money, not my money. Quickly, we got to get some other stuff in here. How about, you guys, have you guys been watching some NCAA women's basketball? Malaysia Full Wiley of South Carolina. Have you guys seen what she's been doing on the court? We're going to throw up some highlights right now. This is probably one of the better jellies that we've seen. Whoa. They're nicknaming her Kyrie Irving. Your, your uh, first impressions of Malaysia's game. Well, you know, we've all seen uh, Akio play pickup. Okay, okay, and where's this it going? jumps right off the page. <laughs> it's, a, it's a reminder, look at this. Behind the back Woo! to the right-handed jelly on the left Leo. side. That's, That's a pretty good. game, Leo. That's pretty slick. I, 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 honestly, I'm going to tell you, I haven't seen her before. Okay. It's like, uh, was it with the, 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 the crazy shooter plays with Iowa? Oh, Caitlin Clark. Oh, Caitlin Clark. Clark. Yeah. I remember the first time I saw a clip of her, I go like, wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, we I, got just, more. I just did a wow right there. That was pretty yeah. good. We got more Malaysia, because she's not done yet. We got another play. I think this is from the Clemson game. They absolutely blast. spanked Clemson. The by but check this out. Oh, look at the She's doing this consistently, Javon. It's got to be impressive. You know, you know what? I'm seeing the pass, I'm seeing the flash. You remember Jay Will? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. A little, little whoop, right? Just flare a little. You gotta make the game exciting. The jerky moves. Almost like you, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, jerk, jerk moves. Okay. Right. No, like, like, like Laurie Market in action. <laughs> All right, well, listen, unfortunately, the Toronto Raptors could not pull out the W in their first in season tournament game, but they did do themselves some favors by keeping it close. And you did a great job tonight. Oh, thank you so okay, much. It's amazing. We appreciate you. I got one question. Oh, okay, here we go. Randy who? Randy, oh wow, oh, okay. Randy who? Come that on, Randy is a real guy. sports bar, bro. Randy. We love a This kill. is the Raptors tonight. We thank you guys. Do remember, the Raptors have the Pistons at 4 p.m. on Sunday. Eastern. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Deuces.